we included one of these 10 mm meters in your kit. It's a low-cost meter, but it has all the functionality we're going to need. So first thing you got to do is unbox it. And it comes with test leads, instructions, and some batteries. So obviously we have to put the batteries in first. And to put the batteries in this, you have to remove the protective bumper and then use a small Phillips screwdriver, like a number one or a number zero Phillips, and take the screw out. And then put in the two AAA batteries. And the reason the cover screws on is for safety, because they want to make sure that it can't come off, because if you're measuring high voltage with the meter, you don't want any metal, including what's in the battery compartment, to be exposed to the user. So put the batteries in, and we find it turns on, powers up. It's good. Put the bumper back on. Just squeezes around there. And then the test leads have these little plugs in the bottom. These little black plugs. Those can be removed and discarded. They're there to prevent it from getting moisture damage. And for most of the things that we're going to do, we're going to plug the black lead into the COM terminal, or the common terminal. It's the one in the center. Then the red lead is going to plug into the one on the right, which can measure volts, current, and milliamps or microamps, ohms, diodes, and continuity. So we'd like to encourage you to read the manual before you use it. If you haven't used a multimeter before, it's a good thing to do. You know, read all the safety precautions. So these are designed to be fairly safe, but it's good to know what you're working with. The first thing we usually do with a multimeter when we're testing it out is we see if there's continuity or a closed circuit when we touch the two probes together. So with this particular meter, we could turn it on the ohm setting, which is over here on the left. And I'd go down to a low range, so 200 ohms is the max for that one. And if I touch the leads together, it should be pretty close to zero. So you have to get a good connection there. So it's saying there's 0.01 ohms between the two terminals. And you can see there's not the best connection there. Maybe they're a little oxidized. So if you're not getting a consistent reading, sometimes you can kind of push the probes into each other. Just kind of embed them in by twisting them a little bit and things clean up. So the OL right there stands for overrange or overload. And that makes sense. Because when the leads aren't touching, you know, from the point of view of the meter, there is an infinite amount of resistance between them. So we, before we talked about measuring ohms, that's the setting here on the left with the omega. And it has multiple ranges. So down here, this says that this can measure any resistance that's less than 200 ohms. On this setting, it would be any resistance that's less than 2,000 ohms. On this setting, less than 20 kilo ohms or 20,000 ohms, and so on and so forth up to 200 mega ohms. So the other measurement we're going to be making a lot of is going to be a voltage measurement. And over here we have volts, and the solid line with the dash under it means DC voltage. So these are our DC voltage ranges right here. So the smallest one is 200 millivolts, 2000 millivolts, which is 2 volts, and so on and so forth, up to 250 volts. So if we want to measure AC voltage, it's the V with the little sine wave symbol next to it. We have two ranges. 250 or 200 volts. And NCV means non-contact voltage measurement. That would be good, say, if you're trying to measure electrical wires in a wall. You can see this little arrow right here that says that if I put the meter up to the wall and there's a live wire in there, it will be able to detect that. So it's a kind of a cool feature. Probably won't use it in this class, but that's okay. Other popular one is measuring current. So we might use that in some of the other labs. Then down here there's a useful feature. See the little thing that looks like an acoustic wave, a little uh, spherical spreading wave right there? So that's the continuity measurement. So if I go down to continuity, okay, we call it the beep test sometimes, and it says that if you get a short circuit, beep. So it's very useful if you're trying to find, you know, if you're trying to trace out circuits. I could use my 9 volt as an example. If I dig the leads into the 9 volt, it says there's continuity between the metal. So that makes sense, or say my screwdriver right here, same thing. So that's a good useful measurement. 
So in the class, as we were saying, we're going to be measuring voltage a lot. And so say if we wanted to measure the voltage on our 9 volt battery, so we'd use the 20 volt range because it's going to be less than 20 volts. And this is the positive side, negative side of the 9 volt battery. So the red lead is usually positive because it's connected to the V terminal. And the black lead is the common or the reference. And if we touch our leads, we could see our 9 volt battery has 8.95 volts. It's a little bit used, but it's still decent. So we could make some other measurements. So this is a nominal 1.5 volt battery showing us 1.53 volts. So notice that I could use a lower range, like I could use this 2000 millivolt range right here, or two volt range. And what that does is it gives me more significant digits or more precision on the meter. So make that measurement right there. It's saying it's you know, 1.533 volts or 1,533 millivolts. And you can see we picked up a significant figure. We went from the 20 volt to the 2000 millivolt range. So one other thing I just want to show real quick is if I connect my test leads backwards, you can see there's a negative sign that shows up on the meter right there. So that negative sign is saying that the voltage is negative and you can see that the, the positive terminal was connected to the negative, so that makes sense. And if we flip them around so that the signs are correct, now we're seeing positive voltage. So good way to check things out, important to take note of that. Another measurement we'll be doing a lot of is measuring resistance. I have a few resistors right here, and we'll talk about reading resistor codes later on, but I just grabbed a random resistor out of my box, and if I want to measure the resistance of that, could turn to appropriate range and put the leads across the resistor, the test leads, and it's saying 2.14 kilo ohms, and that makes sense. So this resistor right here has a, or a red, red, red color scheme, and red, red, red is 2.2 kilo ohms. So that is within the range. Measure this resistor right here, and notice nothing's happening. It's still on the OL or the overload. Good chance that the resistance is higher than the range selected on the meter. So we might want to bring it up. Maybe I'll go to 20 mega ohms, make a measurement. So 1.01. .01. So this is a 1 million ohm or 1 mega ohm resistor. Now that's why it wasn't reading anything on the 20K setting, but when we switched to the 20 mega ohm setting, it was working. So color code on this one is uh, brown, black, green, and that means one million. We have another resistor right here showing zero. Wait, is that really true? So if you're seeing zero and you're on a really high range, you might want to turn it down to a lower range. Maybe we'll go all the way to 200 and just make sure you know, we're not out of the precision of the meter. And sure enough, we're seeing 99.9 .9 ohms. And if we look at the resistor, this one's easy. It says right on there, 100 ohms. And it's a 5% resistor. So all parts have a tolerance to them. So 99.9 .9 is within the 5% the 